channel if this is your first time welcome if you're an oldie and you've been waiting like sis where is the new video hi i'm sorry i told you guys that i was taking a weekend off it ended up being two weekends off and kind of a half y'all know how it is at the end of the semester we've been through let's see one two three four end of the semesters together since i started my youtube channel you know how it goes every time i say i'm going to hit plan and like everything's gonna be fine and i'm gonna make sure i still get videos out even though it's the busiest time of the semester and most times it just doesn't happen <laughs> So I'm sorry you guys, but it is now the final week of the semester. I have two presentations to give um, and then I'm done. I'm done with coursework. I have one more course to take um, in the fall, but like my course load is like over. Like I'll never have a full schedule class anymore. And I, I just don't, I don't know how to process that yet y'all. I just like, we've made it. We really made it. But I feel like I'm about to get ahead of myself because that's actually what this is all about if we're friends on Facebook you already know about a video that I did in 2017 actually April 12th 2017 I did a Facebook live video my first live ever um, by myself I was living in Chicago it was my first year of grad school um, and I was there at a program for school psychology and I was in an EDS program and so how that works is uh, the first year you get a master's and then you stay another two years and you get a uh, you get to sit for the license exam get your license and go practice as a school psychologist so that's what I was there in that program for um, as an EDS student in grad school and I loved Chicago like if any of you like live in Chicago or you have lived in Chicago you know like Chicago was it for me like I honestly thought uh, I was moving to Chicago and that was where I was gonna be for a good portion of my life I would start my career there like I loved loved Chicago. I loved everything about Chicago. Um, and I ended up living in West Loop and Edgewater. So I got to experience two different kind of sides of the city. I lived on the lake in Edgewater, like literally could walk down the street to the beach, to the parks, to uh, the trails that line the water. Like I could see the skyline from the rooftop, like Chicago was life. But anyways, let me focus, <laughs> y'all tell I'm in Chicago. Um, so I was doing this live from Chicago. I was wrapping up, oh, well, I was getting close to the end of my first year, so which means I was gonna get that master's degree. But around December, I started having, not really, reg well, some regrets. Let's word it like that. I was having regrets about the uh, program that I had chosen. And even though I love Chicago, I just did not feel like the program was where I was supposed to be. I didn't feel like I was getting everything I could out of grad school. It wasn't meeting my expectations. And I was spending, y'all, it was a private school. So I was spending a boatload of money. Like, I might as well have gone to law school with what I paid in that one year to go to this private school. And so I was paying all this money and not getting my return. And so around December, it was kind of just like, this ain't right. But I didn't feel like I could do anything about it. Like, I don't think y'all understand. My senior year of IU, I said if I get into a grad school in Chicago, I applied to two or three in Chicago um, and elsewhere, but really Chicago. I was like, if I get into these ones in Chicago, I'm going. I don't care. I don't care what the money says. Like, I'm gonna try to get some GA positions and assistantships and some stuff. But regardless, I'm going. Like, period. I'm going. Um, I'm starting my life in Chicago. Like, I'm gonna do the whole city thing, and this is about to be it. Like, I just was the author of my own story, which y'all will see how that <laughs> comes back to bite me in the butt. Um, but yeah, so in December, it was kind of like, this is jacked up, but like, there's nothing I can do about it. When I was walking out of one of the schools that I was doing projects in, and I had just kind of hit a wall, and I was just like, this is not it. Like, this is not right. This is not it. This is not how this is supposed to be. Like, I can't do this. And so actually, I always tell the story, which she's probably like, dang it, like, I'm the reason she left. It's not her fault at all. But I was walking out with one of my classmates that I was working on that project with, and we sat in her car. 
because uh, she was driving me to the to the train stop and I told her I was like I was venting like I was frustrated and I was like this is dumb this is really dumb because I had an amazing relationship with an advisor a potential advisor at um, Ohio State like I love that program like they were urban and social justice focused like I could have been studying under a black woman who is like well known in our field and has left a legacy in this field and like and I'm here and I was like I could have been in state like paying in state tuition like I'm spending all this money like I'm just venting and in that moment as I'm venting a thought literally just shot into my mind like what if I'm not supposed to be here and it scared the living daylights out of me because it was like oh my gosh did I do this on my own? Did I come to Chicago on my own? Not on my own will and power because God definitely made room for me there. He opened doors for me there. Regardless of the fact that I made the decision to be there, God gave me the provision um, to be there. But yeah, when I said that out loud, it was like, whoa. It was just kind of like my eyes open to this idea of like, maybe I'm not supposed to be here. So I realized I'm giving the whole story and I just, I want to focus on the video. So I think I'm going to do a reaction. I'm going to watch this back. I haven't watched this video probably since 20. 2017, maybe 2018. I think I watched it last year on the one year anniversary of posting this video. But I just want to watch this video and react to it from like this current state that I'm in because as y'all know, I'm here in Columbus. I've been here for two years at The Ohio State University. Uh, I'm now a PhD student. Like there's all this stuff that is a part of it. But let's react to the video. I'll put some clips in of me reacting to the original video and then I'll just kind of talk through with you guys like where I am now, what is the update after two years of making this huge life decision, after living in Chicago to move my entire life to Columbus, move back to Ohio after five years, um, go to this big huge institution and like all because I felt like God was calling me and kind of you know veering my path back to where it was always supposed to be. So that's quite an introduction but yeah let's go ahead and watch this video and just yeah. And I'm grabbing the tissue because y'all know how I am. Let's just be prepared, okay? Because y'all know, y'all know how I am. You know! I was so nervous, y'all. <laughs> Somebody's here. Hello. Say hi when you come in. In my little Edgewater apartment. Oh. I miss that apartment. Hello. So I will be sharing about my present testimony. So this is not like my testimony, like how I got saved, but this is like my present situation, what I've been going through. You might have noticed I was off of social media for a few weeks, and I'm gonna share it to you, uh, share it with you why. Um, and this is uh, kind of pull and tug about like how transparent um, is appropriate for social media, and I've kind of been going back and forth about that. But I feel like that this situation that I've been through is really um, for someone else. It's so that someone else can hear, someone else can be encouraged. And so I'm choosing to be transparent. I've prayed over this entire thing because I really want to be able to be transparent with you all. And you all really get something out of this. So I really do pray that you're blessed. Um, so as many of you know, I'm currently living in Chicago, um, pursuing my Master's of Education and Education Specialist degrees in School Psychology. Um, and I've been here since August of last year, and I love Chicago. Hi, Darrell Real. Um, I love Chicago, y'all. Like, I know I had some flubs when I first love. got here. <laughs> y'all probably remember my status is about trying to figure out the train system <laughs> and all that obnoxious name. I finally figured it out. Um, I'm pretty much a G now. Most people ask me for directions. That means I've made it. So yeah, uh, Chicago's amazing, but amidst all this good stuff, I've had some pretty tough challenges since I've been here. Um, and I've pushed through all the struggles by the grace of God, and one in particular just wouldn't go away. And that was my frustrations with my program. Um, things I just never really expected to have to deal with in graduate school or some things I've dealt with since I've been here. And I'm just like, what's going on? Um, and so three weeks ago, to the date, uh, a unique conversation I had with one of my peers, it was like the first time I ever thought to myself, thought to myself, what if I'm not supposed to be here? Um, and that thought was scary. Hi, Eric! Shut up, Evangelist. Um, so the thought was scary, to say the very least, okay? Like, imagine 
thinking that. No, I couldn't wrap my head around it. I couldn't even say it out loud. Um, and I take so much pride in being able to say, like, I have my own place, I live in the city, like, I'm making my dreams come true in the city. Then I just started thinking about all the money I spent to be here and, um, like, the big yeah. fuss I made about being in Chicago. And I'm like, um, yeah, I feel like leaving would mean that I failed. Um, and so, what's the first thing y'all do when you're scared? I know the first thing I do when I'm scared, I call my mama, okay? Mama is the first call. Bye. I don't care nothing else. Mom, I called her immediately following this conversation that I had with my friend. Um, and I still could barely say it out loud like, Mom, am I not supposed to be here? Um, but that was the first time I said it. And I told her, I said, maybe I'm not supposed to be here. Um, and I did post this last year. Pause the story a little bit. Um, I d didn't post this last year, but I actually was accepted to Ohio State. And um, why didn't I post it? Because um, I had made up for myself in my mind that I was going to Chicago. I didn't care what anybody said. I didn't care nothing else. I'm going to Chicago. So I didn't even feel the need to. Uh, can we pause the story here? Because I am so dead serious when I tell you. I think I told one person outside of my family that I got into Ohio State. I mean, it was like I blacked that out in my mind because I wanted y'all to know I was going to Chicago, okay? And the fuss that I made about Chicago was just so, like, I went so hard. I went so hard about getting into Loyola. Like, yeah. Y'all would have never found out that I got into Ohio State <laughs> if it looked up to me at the time. So I didn't even feel the need to post that I got into Ohio State because, like, for what? For why? I'm going to Chicago. Um, and so, yeah, I, um... After I got in, I really did feel a pull to go there. They were recruiting me really hard, and I loved the interview. I loved the faculty. I really loved so much about the program, um, and it was definitely the more wise financial decision for me. Uh, and I had like that butterfly feeling, like, girl, you might be supposed to go here. But yeah, my parents tried to convince me, you know, without discouraging me, because they are my number one cheerleader. So they was like, I mean, Chicago, yay! But like, think about this. But I moved forward with Chicago. I was like, Chicago it is. I'm excited about Chicago. This is the move. Um, and so ever since I declined Ohio State, though, I had like this little like, mm, in the back of my head, like, mm, are you making the biggest mistake of your life? But I just shushed it. I'm like, no, we're going to make it. It's all good. Um, so then here I am having this conversation with my parents that day about like maybe I wasn't supposed to be here. And so immediately the conversation shifted to um, opportunities to possibly transfer to a house state. Um, and again, this is all super crazy for me that this is all happening. I can't even wrap my head around it. Um, so two hours later, I'm emailing the director of Ohio State's program. An hour later, we were on the phone talking about options like it's no big deal. And mind y'all, like, I'm shocked. I still can't believe that this is happening. Um, and something I thought was so major, like, I hear people talking about transferring all the time. And I, to me, that's major. I've heard horror stories. I'm literally having a conversation with her, and she's talking like, this is absolutely no big deal, like, whatever. So I'm like, what? So I, I can't really process it yet. And so I didn't decide that night, um, but I immediately called up my crew, my friends, my family, and I began fasting, and I told them that I was, and I told them why. Um, and I went on a two-week fast because uh, the director had said that there would be a faculty meeting in two weeks um, to decide whether or not they would allow me back in the program. So Can we pause here and just talk about that was the longest two weeks of my life. I mean, wow. I mean, I was praying and fasting and just hopeful. But, like, waiting on that answer was agony. It was agony. But we made it. And um, I found out last week that I've been accepted and will be in Ohio State Buckeye in the fall. Surprise! <laughs> That's the big cow. Oh, um, my God. Yeah. And I'm going to pause the story here because... I just, I want to try to explain, like, internally what was going on inside of me at this point in my life. Like, I could not believe it. I remember getting the message from Ohio State saying, welcome, you're a Buckeye. And I literally sobbed for at least an hour. I mean, I put on worship music and just sobbed for an hour. Like... I just 
Uh, okay, let me just wait and debrief at the end because there's just so much to say. So literally, I, it's like, this transition is so, so smooth. Like I literally am getting my master's next month um, and I'll finish my classes for the master's in August. And literally, it's just like I'm going to Ohio State for the second degree. Like guys, it's just, it, it makes no sense how God worked this out. It really makes no sense. I have so much peace. I have so much joy. I have so much excitement. But here's the testimony. This is why I'm calling this my testimony. Who? Fear? How am I getting them? Not already. Everybody in here, tighten up. You already know. They do not need a reason. Um, so I am someone who's a victim to planning and over planning my life. I make these perfect calculations in my head or on paper about what's next. And I know I'm not the only one. Um, thank you, Tristy. Um, and everyone's always asking like, you know, what's next? What's next? So <laughs> y'all are cutting up and I feel obligated to give them, you know, some applause worthy, um, description of my future plans. And I know I'm not alone. Thank you, Custer, for the amen. I'm not alone in that. And so this, this situation caused me to think like, am I really trusting God or am I trusting my own intuition and my own experience, um, when it comes to my future? Um, and I told y'all I made the Chicago decision for myself. I saw big city success. I thought I had to top my undergrad achievements. I thought I had to prove myself to who I do not know. We're still figuring that out. Um, somehow I had um, equated moving back home as a personal failure. Um, where I, where I got that from, I again do not know. Um, so much so that it didn't even really weigh like the burden of moving to Chicago for this program at this stage of my life. I didn't really consider very heavily like how much the financial obligation would be at a private school for graduation um, and moving my entire life to a new city right now. Like I just completely overlooked that because it was like, I'm gonna do what I want to do. Like it may not have looked like that to y'all, but that's what it was. Um, I had stars in my eyes for Chicago and I was going there even if it killed me. Darn. Uh, but um, but this is why God is so dope, y'all. This is why he's so dope. Is that his grace followed me here. He covered me. He surrounded me with relationships. He surrounded me with people who actually care, who looked out for me. Um, he gave me one, not one, but two apartments. Um, within a year, he allowed me to move even though my family wasn't close here without help. Like... God is amazing. He allowed my first co collegiate 4.0. Um, he allowed me, he worked through me at my job. I got a good job, good paying job. And I get to work with high schoolers um, in the city, you know, and have an impact on their lives. It's exactly what my, my field is all about. So like, God, you're dope. Like, your grace followed me here. Like, he literally covered me and kept me and guided me with love back to his destiny that he always had for me like what dope like he allowed Chicago y'all to be a part oh I'm about to cry I'm about to cry because I didn't grab my tissue he allowed Chicago to be a part of my story and he allowed it to be part of my testimony like dope he's so dope okay so when I came to making the decision it was as if I was saying um sorry it was as if God was saying will you trust me um, this has been a test of my faith, y'all. Like, he was literally saying, like, will you give up your ordinary for God's extraordinary? Like, for my extraordinary. Will you do it? And it reminds me of that meme. Do y'all remember that meme of the girl with the teddy bear? It floats around every once in a while. But she's got a little teddy bear, and then it's like God's got this big teddy bear behind his back, and he's asking her for the little teddy bear, like, do you trust me? Because he about to give her this big old teddy bear. So she looking all sad, like, oh, I gotta give up my teddy bear. But like, bruh! This big old teddy bear behind me, like you don't even know. And that meme is literally what has been going on, y'all. Um, so his grace allowed me to, tr the transfer process to be so smooth. Like y'all, I'm telling you, I've heard the horror stories of transferring. Within four days, this turned around completely. In two weeks, well now three weeks, like this, this process is just so smooth. It makes no sense to me. It literally blows my mind from letting my apartment go. Like what? That was such a headache the first time. This time it's just all coming together. It's just like, what, 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 what? Crazy. If I really would have checked it against his word, I would have found verses like Proverbs 3 and 5 through 6 that say, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways. Submit to him and he will make your path straight. Like what? 
like this is literally what I should have been doing. Um, and Priscilla said that we should, Priscilla Shire, the lady uh, with the devotion, she said that we should be asking God to help us discern the, the difference between right and almost right. Because the devil, he, he gains ground with almost right. Because he can, he can mash it up and try to make it look like it's right. You take that, he got you. Um, and so then the other morning, you might have saw I posted about Romans 8. But specifically, Romans 8, 28 um, jumped out at me. And it says, we are assured and know. This is the amplified version. We are assured and know that God being a partner in their labor, all things work together, are fitting into a plan for good to and for those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose. Y'all, all things, catch this, even when we go out on our own, his grace makes room for even our mistakes to work together for our good. What? Ugh. Like even our mistakes, he makes, he turns them for our good. How dope of a God is that? Like that you would make Chicago part of my testimony, part of my story, even though you probably had some other plan for me, but you used what I did and still made it great. Like all things work together for our good. Blows my mind. Absolutely blows my mind. For those of you who are stuck thinking you have to create your own success or even manipulate your circumstances as if God needs any help with unfolding our destiny. Jesus, why do we think that? Jesus. Anyways, um, I have Matthew 6.33 for y'all. Up and down, need some help. But seek, aim at, and strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. And then all these things together will be given to you. Like, you don't have to worry about manipulating and making your own way. All you have to do is focus on him. The path will be made. Like, the way will be made. He literally said it. He literally said it. Um, and so I want to end with lyrics from one of my favorite, favorite worship songs entitled Made Away by Travis Green. And the second verse of Made Away, I get something out of this, new out of this every time. But the second verse says, now we're here looking back on where we've come from. Looking back on where we've come from. Because of you and nothing we've done to deserve the love and the mercy you've shown. Your grace was strong enough to pick us up and you made a way. When our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over, you made a way. And we're standing here only because you made a way. And y'all, I am standing, excuse me, sitting, sorry. But I am literally standing here because God undeniably made a way. That, like, he, he made the way. I can't describe to you how this happened. I cannot make sense of how this happened. He made a way. And so that is all I had to share with y'all. I don't know if y'all have anything else to say or ask or comment. But I got to stop before I get on here and my eyes out. And I don't have no tissue near me. Oh, you guys, I mean, so I didn't take notes. I usually try to take notes before my, my videos, but I didn't take notes this time because I don't know how to describe. I'm sorry, y'all. I know some of y'all are probably like, she cried every video. I don't mean to. I just don't know how. To describe this journey how do I how do I do an outline for this journey there's just so much I could say there's so much I could say because I remember that girl I remember that girl that day what that felt like to take such a blind faith move it I was going off of what I believe was a word from God a nudge in my spirit that hey, you might not have made the right decision the first time. And here's all the evidence. But like, if you trust me, <laughs> if you just trust me, I promise you, I'm going to get you back on, on the path, on the path that I always had set for you. Y'all, 
I'm so emotional because this path that he had set for me was so far beyond like the girl in that video didn't even know I, I, I could get a taste. My spirit was reacting to the fact that I know God is going to do something amazing with this move. But I couldn't even wrap my head around it then. What God was going to do through this move. And how much my life was going to change for the better from this move. Like I... Y'all, that, that girl there was finishing an EDS degree. I transferred here to finish my EDS degree. I was set that that's the degree that I was going to get. I was tired of school. I wanted to be out in the field. I, I swore, that girl swore up and down that she would never get a PhD. That she wasn't good enough. That she wasn't good enough to get a PhD. And I come here to this place where before I, I didn't feel like I had the resources and the whatever else I would need to, to be a PhD student. And if I was in Chicago, if I had stayed in Chicago, y'all, I never would have gotten my PhD. I absolutely would not have. And my life would have looked very different. God would have still blessed, as you heard in there when I went to Chicago on my own regardless, he's still blessed. And that's just how amazing God is. But like, that's the difference between good and great. That's the difference between God blessing our plans and us walking in the blessed destiny that God has for our lives. Like, I just think about the people here. I think about the opportunities that I don't even feel prepared for or like I'm deserving of. I think about the genuine relationships and the genuine support that sometimes seems unsubstantiated. Like, why do you believe in me like this? Like, like when I got here, that's how I even got into the PhD program is because people, classmates, mentors, my advisor, I mean, I hadn't even been here for a few months and they were already looking at my work and saying, I really think you need to consider the PhD. And I'm like, what are y'all seeing? Like, what is this? Like, where is it even coming from? Like, people believing in me before I even fully believed in my own abilities. And what I have here, what I, the way that God has used my life here, is just beyond my, like today, earlier today, I was in Cincinnati giving a presentation on imposter syndrome. We got the chance to tell part of my story about how imposter syndrome almost kept me from my destiny and how it's something that I'm, I'm daily or quite often dealing with but I've learned to overcome and to succeed anyway and I'm sharing this with people and they're coming up to me and thanking me for my story taking my business cards like what I got business cards like who am I like but like th this is this is what you had in mind God like I, I have those moments often and if you've been on the channel for any amount of time like you know I have these moments frequently of just like this this is what you had and you're up, up your sleeve. This is what you had in mind for me, God. When I was sitting outside the train station, venting, and you nudged my spirit in that one moment, shifted my life. I took a leap of faith. I asked my parents after signing a two-year lease for an apartment. Two months later, I'm telling them, well, now I'm going to move out of this apartment. I'm going to find somebody random to come live in it like what I just like it was crazy that faith move was crazy y'all it literally made no logical sense but God doesn't work in logical like his his realm is so far above what we see like he sees the end point he sees so far beyond the moment that we see and I just can't believe that 20 how, was, how old was I? 23 year old me, freshly 23 year old me, 
have the guts to trust God on blind faith that he was going to take care of me and that this move was right and not just another whim that I came up with. And like God has revealed in so many ways that this is exactly where I was supposed to be. And like now I'm finishing up my last, ah, I can't even believe it, my last full semester of coursework ever in college. Like I will never have a full course load of work ever again. Like this is it. Like I've made it this far. I've made it to this version of me. This day that seems so far away and unattainable is here now and God has equipped me and blessed my path up until this point and I'll be doing my candidacy exam over the summer and then a uh, dissertation will be next year and like what I'm writing a dissertation <laughs> like these things that I thought I could not do y'all that I felt so incapable of I'm doing and God has equipped me to do them and I'm I feel empowered and I feel capable and it just it blows my mind um it blows my mind so to try to wrap this up because my intent was just to kind of give you guys an update about like some people who only saw that video ever in life are probably like whatever happened to the girl who decided to move her life to Columbus um on a whim and um so I just wanted to update you guys but I also wanted to I guess to wrap this up, to share that even in a faith move, um, a blind faith move like that, it doesn't mean that everything is going to be perfect following that. Because literally everything after that decision in 2017 tried to take me out of here. I mean, 2017 literally, it was like the enemy knew. Mm, come on and make that connection because I haven't made that connection up until now. But I think the enemy knew what my life was going to be, what God had waiting on me, what he had prepared for me here in Columbus. And so he tried everything he could to, to stop me and to keep me down. And I mean, severe depression um, that year of just, I felt like I get over one thing and it was another boulder and all brand new stuff. Just knocking me off my feet that felt unfair that felt unjustified but through that the Lord walked with me and he blessed me and he kept my faith in that I'm doing the right thing and if you just stick with this and stay in it and trust me the same way you did to move and pack up a truck and drive from Chicago to this place in the unknown if you would just trust me like you did in that moment, look what I did with that and look what I'm going to do. Like you have no idea. 2018 to me explained 2017 and everything since that has explained 2017 and has explained this move, has explained why God has me here and what he's doing in me and through me with this. So I want to encourage you because yes, I encourage you if the Lord is moving on your heart to make some kind of faith move or to step out and trust him in an area. I want you to do that. I want you to follow what it is he's telling you to do. But I want you to also be aware that the enemy, he peeps all of this. He understands the power that's within you, the destiny that's within you. And he's going to try to stop you. He's going to try to convince you that you're crazy and that what you're doing is not actually what God wanted. And whatever else he's going to try to stumble you but let my life be a witness for you that literally trusting God with my life over the last three years and really over the last decade uh plus with all the things that he's done the way one thing led to another led to another it's like puzzle pieces fitting in let my life be a witness to you that God is faithful ah uh, that God is faithful and he's trustworthy. He's proven himself over and over to be true, to love us, to have the best intentions for us. That all things, all things, I hope you caught that from the video. All things, the good, the bad, the ugly, the in-between. All of it is a part of your story. All of it is what God is doing and putting together 
to write this beautiful story of your life, to reveal your destiny, to allow your story to impact so many people beyond you. Like, God is writing this story. Trust Him. Like, big faith move, do it. Crazy, stupid faith, do it. Do it. Because, like, I just, every day, even in the trying times, I'm filled with joy. Because I'm like, Lord, you, you on some other. That's what I say now. Lord, you, you be on some other. Like, you just, the way you coordinate and do stuff is beyond my wildest dreams. And so my tears and my smiles and my pauses and my, oh, it's just my heart exploding with gratefulness that the Lord cared this much about me and my story and about his will being performed through my life, about me being a vessel for him to show other people. He cared just that much that he's blessed me like he has. So, like my hat say, trust God and chill, sis. Just trust God and chill because I'm telling you, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be miraculous. So, ah, uh, this video is probably five million thousand years long. And guess what? I don't care. I'm finna edit it down, but I'm gonna keep this story just what it is because it's important because I, yeah. God has done an amazing thing since April 12th, 2017. Since, far before that, but definitely since April 12th, 2017, when I now see y'all that I was jumping out on faith and trusting God. And he's just, he's blown my mind. He's blown my mind. So, yeah, okay, I've bugged plenty. So, um, I hope you all enjoyed this. If you did, please feel free to share. Uh, that first testimony blew up. And I got so many testimonies and paragraphs in my DMs and text messages of just people, like my story, God using my story to bless them and to challenge them and to move them in the direction of faith. So if that's you, I need you to tell me about it. Like, I just need you to tell me about it because I love, I get excited knowing that the Spirit is moving through the things that I've shared and that I'm exactly in line with what He wants me to be doing um, and saying. So, anyways, I hope you feel free to share that with me either in the comment section, DMs, wherever you find me. Go ahead um, and share your story if you feel so led. Make sure you like this video if you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to turn on the notification bell and subscribe because this is what we do here at Life Journal with Miss GCH. So, obviously, you don't want to miss the next session. I mean, I'm going to try not to cry every video, but... You know, if you want to be around for what's next, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button, notification bell, all that good stuff. And depends what I have. I love y'all, and I will see you in the next.